Oh, go live. Was it live? I'm tripping. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. Make sure everything is uh, copacetic. Okay. Got some good audio. Got the audio fixed right now. So we should have some good audio. Had to go back to my old roadcaster. How's everybody doing? Peace to the gods. Peace to the gods. I didn't send that out. All right, how's everybody doing? Keep trying to take the classes. The class, the courses aren't up yet. The courses will be up at the end of the week. We 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 putting the courses together right now, so the courses will be up at the end of the week. So you ain't you can't take a course just yet. All right, we got some new courses that we're putting out. So the courses will be up. Um, just a quick announcement. You know, I'm having I'm having a seminar in Dallas, Texas on the 5th and the 6th. We're working very hard to make sure that this goes, this is going to be a great seminar. There is a registration link under this video. All right, you can register for it. Um, the $399 allows you to bring you and your wife or guests uh, with you. All right. So just FYI for everyone out there. And uh, peace, peace. There, woo. Hey, I hope I'm halfway across the world tonight. No bullshit. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So let's see what we got. What Nat? Was it this? Yeah. Yeah. This is where it was. All right. We're going to continue from yesterday. On yesterday, I was talking about is SPC, uh, the secure party process, is, is it a scam? Because, you know, that's the first thing out of people's mouth is they try to act like I'm scamming somebody or something like that. All these people talking about what I have done worked for them. Listen, let me say this. When you get arrested and you use this process, you're going to find out that it's real. That's all I need to say on that. Anything else, you're trying to discharge a car and a house and all that bullshit, I can't really speak on that too much. I can only speak on, well, I can't speak on it, yeah, because I've done it, but... I'm just saying how I found out it was real. The first thing that opened my eyes is when I got in trouble. And because, and let me tell you why that is. It's because it's something about when you're in court, when they're talking about the truth and God, this is what I, this whole thing revealed to me is that there, these people, no matter what type of outside appearances they project, there's something that they're afraid of. They're afraid of the truth, number one. And they're afraid of you. They can't force you to do anything. Um, but they have to, but they can coerce you. It's called like threat, duress, and coercion. They can put you under duress, hold you in a cell for a long time. They can threaten you. 
Uh, they can coerce you, but they can't make you do anything. And that's where the test comes in. That's where the test comes in. And that's what you're going to really start to see when you start dealing with this information. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about liens today. And there's a document that I want uh, to actually uh, go over. And the liens, and the reason I'm talking about commercial liens is liens is how money is created. And this is how they've made everybody out here a target. Okay, this is why you have a proliferation of traffic tickets, uh, people charging you, making anything a felony damn charge, just walking all these victimless crimes now. They seem like they can charge you with anything. You know, you walking across the street, that's a felony, you know, whatever. They can make anything they want into a felony. And the reason for that is, is because charges are the basis for paying back the national debt. They don't get enough money from the repayment of the national debt just from people paying their taxes. This is another reason why they want to go into a cashless society because they're going to have 100% of the people paying taxes. Once they can get everybody chipped and get everybody into a computer system with a digital currency, there's no going to be no more skipping on taxes. I hope people understand that. And as a matter of fact, you're going to do, they're going to have, be, have a lot more coercive power because if you don't do what they want you to do, they'll just turn off your chip and you won't be able to spend any money or do anything like that. They already, uh, if you look right now, anytime they do anything to, uh, to somebody, what they don't like is about money. Like what they did with Kanye West, how did they punish Kanye West? They took his money. They took his money. Closed his bank account. Jamie Dimon kicked him out of Chase, Chase Bank. It's about money. So, today, we're going to, before we go into the liens, we got to get into a discussion about the admiralty, of how this is an admiralty jurisdiction that is civil in nature. Um, now, there is a document on the internet that is very, very good. Um, I always suggest that people read this document if they are into reading case law, because if you're looking for verification, the reason we have to, before we get into a discussion about secured party, we got to lay a foundation as to why you are using secured party. This, these, I'm showing you why right now. On yesterday, when I was showing you the indictments and showing you how these uh, uh, charges are uh, commercial in nature and how everything in the system has been con uh, converted into something commercial in nature, you start, should start to get some sort of inkling as to why you're using a secured party process. Now, to give you a synopsis of the secured party process, essentially what you are doing is making a claim against your estate prior to anyone else doing it because that's how liens work in commerce. Liens work according to who has the lien first on the property. So, uh, I've, I've made this uh, analogy before to like to people who are, um, you know, they have a mortgage. You know, mortgages are very good, uh, a very good uh, example of how commercial liens work. You know, if you have a first and second mortgage, you have a first mortgage with Bank of America and you have a second mortgage with Chase. If there is a foreclosure on the property, Bank of America is going to get all their money. Chase is going to get whatever is left over. Okay. The second, the junior lien is subordinate to the first lien, the priority lien. All right, so what you're doing is you're putting a priority lien against your estate prior to anybody else doing it. Now, the reason they don't like you doing this is because you're blocking them from um, creating money because money is created through the lien process. You see, when you put a lien against property, that there's a piece of paper called a, 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 like a bond or something like that that represents that lien that now has value because there's some sort of collateral that is supporting the lien. In the case of an arrest, it is your body, all right? But in the case of a mortgage, it is the house. In the case of a car, it is the automobile itself, all right? So there's some value in that paper. Now they can take that paper and discount it and trade it and get some sort of liquid asset, all right? That's what this is all about. They're creating money through creating liens on people. But when you do a secure party process and you place a lien against yourself, 
you are preventing these people from putting a lien against you and making any money. Now, a lot of people out there will try to play and act like this ain't no serious process or nothing, which is some bullshit. I can't even begin to understand how you would think this is not real. All you have to do is look out into the world and see that everything that you know about involves somebody making some sort of payment on something where and then somebody wants some sort of collateral before they will extend you some sort of credit. OK, well, in the case of a charge, which is a lien, it's something else. Let's look at a charge real quick. Let's look at a charge real quick. Let's go over to our, our dictionaries. And let's look up what a charge is, all right? All right, so all this word charge in here, charge back, charge and discharge, chargeable. Here it is, charge to accuse a person. Is that all right? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for, though. It's right here, it is, charge. Okay. Okay, charge. Now, I'm going to suggest that people, when they first come into this space, you look up all the words that you thought you knew the definition to. You know, a lot of people out there on the street, you know, I got a charge, and you think you know the system, but you've never even taken the time to even look up the word charge and see what it really means, or even look up the word tax or something like that, you need to look these words up because they don't mean what you think they mean, all right? So let's look at charge. Now, on here, you'll see that you got seven different senses of the word. You have sense one, sense two, sense three, sense four, sense five, sense six, and sense seven. Now, this right here, just you got diff seven different let me turn the cameras on me. You should be able to see right here that just because you got seven different senses of the word charge, when you are in court and the judge asks you, do you understand the charges? How in the fuck are you going to say, yeah? You should be saying, your honor, could you please define the word charge from me and where you derive that word from? because I'm trying to make a determination about the nature of the charges against me. And we can start with that word charge in itself, because it is my understanding that charge has seven senses of the word. And I would appreciate it if you would reveal to this court on the record and myself under which of these senses are being applied in this particular matter. Now he probably, he definitely can say number one, because it is a formal accusation of an offense as a preliminary step to a prosecution, a murder charge, it's, it is. But it's something deeper about it because we are not in an Article Three court. We are in an Article One legislative tribunal where they are dealing with commercial matters, all right? So the commercial sense of the word, which is number five, is an encumbrance, a lien. Let me put it on the screen. You can see right here. A charge is what? An encumbrance, a lien, or a claim. A charge on property. Now, when we go into the uh, when we go into the courtroom, you probably heard people say when you go into the courtroom and people start talking, and it's your time to speak, and the judge speaks to you, you could say something like, uh, "Yana, do you have a charge against me?" You probably is going to remain silent, and then you say, "Do you know anyone who does have a claim against me?" He probably will still remain silent or you have a dumb prosecutor sometimes who will say something like um, 
the state of Texas has a claim against you. At which point you can respond, Yana, would you I please I request that the honorable judge direct the prosecutor to provide the assessment for the charges along with a certified audit trail of all transactions, including voucher as well as all disbursement documents and receipts. The reason that you are saying that is because the prosecutor just admitted on the record that this is civil because he says there's a claim. When we have claims, it's civil in nature, which means there's some sort of pecuniary interest in the case. All right? You have a right to know all of the documentation associated with that claim. So when you say that, you say, I request that the honorable judge direct the prosecutor to provide the assessment for the charges along with a certified audit trail of all transactions including voucher, as well as all disbursement documents and receipts. All right, you're asking for an accounting. The judge is sitting on the bench, and he's a hearing officer. You do know that bench means bank. All right, bench means bank. All right, it's a bank. So we're doing banking in there. It's, you know, it's real, and it's undercover, everything that's going on. You will only come to know what's going on if you're asking questions. This is why they like to saddle you with an attorney, because when you have an attorney, you can't ask any questions. When you're represented by counsel, you're not allowed to speak. That's why your attorney tells you to be quiet, because you haven't made an appearance in the case to speak. He's representing the defendant, not you. OK, you're not the defendant. He is. So when you've elected to have counsel represent you, you no longer are representing the defendant. OK, now in the beginning, for you to have to be uh, have the liability associated with the case, they need you to plead into the record. All right, that's why the most important step of any case is when they bring you into arraignment and they ask you, "Do you understand the charges?" You always say this, Yana. I don't see any charges because they're just standing there. When you say I don't see any charges, they're going to bring you your indictment or whatever piece of paper they got your charges on. They're going to bring it over and hand it to you. At that point, you look at it on the front and the back. You say, I don't see any charges. I request the honorable judge to, uh, I direct the, uh, I request that the honorable judge direct the prosecutor to read the charges into the record. If no one has read the charges into the record, there's no one with the associated liability. All right, what if you are innocent? Who's liable for that? Okay, who brought those charges against you? That's why all of these public servants are bonded. All right, they have liability. How dare they arrest and uh, snatch somebody off the street and then take their freedom, the most precious thing that the creator of the balanced universe has given you is your freedom so they can make some money off of it. Your life and your freedom. And they take trying to take it from you. So I, first of all, we need to establish the liability of the party who's bringing the charges. And you won't do that. There's a presumption that you don't have any you got to understand everything they do is all presumption, assumption, and color of law. You got to rebut every presumption. So if there's a presumption that you're not interested in the assessment of the charges, you need to rebut that. If there's a presumption you're not interested in the charges being read into the record, you need to rebut that. Sometimes you'll hear an attorney, he'll tell you, we are going to waive arraignment. Waiving arraignment, all that means is you're entering a not guilty plea into the record. A not guilty plea is a traverse. You have now traversed the charges. Let's look at the word traverse. Traverse. Common law pleading, a formal denial of a fact. An allegation made in the opposing party's pleading. See, traverse. All right, let's look at the expert commentary. You got to read that. It is said that the technical term traverse from traverto to turn over is applied to an issue taken upon an indictment for a misdemeanor and means nothing more than turning over or putting off the trial to a following session or a cc. And that, and that thus, it is that the officer of the court asked the party whether he is ready to try then or will traverse to the next session. Though some have referred its meaning originally to the denying or taking issue upon an indictment without reference to the delay of trial and which seems more correct. And I remember this, and this is how they try to play. This is why you need the old dictionaries. They try to play, but this is the meaning right here, all right, that you're, you're denying something. Now, why is that important? 
when you deny something, okay, you're breathing life into something that was Im uh, just a, somebody's imagination. You got to be very careful when you take issue with something because if they say something and you deny it, okay, now you say we can go to trial because they say I did it, you say I didn't. Okay, we need to get the facts straight. But we don't want to go into any fact finding. We don't want to go into any argument or anything like that. We want to do things in the spirit of the Bible, what the Bible says. Let's look and see what the Bible says about when you go to court. You go to court. Let's look at this real quick. Let's just go to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to go to verse 25. Let's read this real quick. It's real interesting. Let's see what Jesus Christ had to say about arguing with people in court. This is Matthew 5, 25. He says, agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art on the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Now what is a farthing? What is a farthing? You got to pay the what the other most farthing. I can tell y'all what it means. It means pennies. But we need to look at it. You know, it's something about when you see something with your own eyes. Farthing, something of small value, a mite, former British monetary unit equivalent to one quarter of a penny. A coin represents this unit. All right, so it's one quarter of a penny. That's what a farthing is, all right? So you're not coming out of jail until you paid the very last farthing. Okay, it says agree with our, our adversary. So we need agreements. Now, a lot of you may be under the impression that when we say agreement, we're talking about kissing somebody's ass. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about agreement in the sense that you're going to do whatever they want you to do. I'm talking about we have to have an agreement or what's called a stipulation. I want you to write down the word stipulation. Let's look and see what the word stipulation means. Let's look at this word stipulation. Real interesting word. Oh, hold on, let me put it back up. Uh, stipulate show, stipulated judgment. <coughs> Where is it? Did I just miss it. Stipulate stipulation. There it is. All right. Stipulation. All right. So let's look at see what a stip. This is a very important word for you to know. I'm, I'm trying to build up your vocabulary right now. Uh, which is what you should be doing. If you're new to this subject, this is what your first six weeks, this is all you should be doing. Not trying to go out and buy a damn car, not trying to go out and discharge a house, not trying to go out and put a lien against your baby mama, nothing like that. This is what you should be doing. And I just said for six weeks, building your vocabulary up. Would you go over to China and then try to go into court? Would you go to China and try to buy a house and you don't speak Chinese? Would you go over there in China and try to discharge a, a car and you don't speak Chinese? Like that, that would you, you go in another, this is what you're doing when y'all go into the legal world. That's why they say y'all crazy, because you go into the legal world, don't know no legal lease, and then try to do shit. It's insane. So what is a stipulation? 
a stipulation, a material condition, a requirement, and an agreement, especially a factual representation that is incorporated into a contract as a term. All right, contract, that's what we're dealing with, contracts. Such a contract term often appears in a section of the contract called representations and warranties. All right, let's look at some expert commentary. Well, well this is sense too. A voluntary agreement between two opposing parties concerning some relevant point especially an agreement relating to a proceeding made by attorneys representing adverse parties to the proceeding. Okay, a defendant entered into a, st a stipulation on the issue of liability, a stipulation relating to a pending judicial proceeding made by a party to the proceeding or the party's attorney is binding without consideration. All right, stipulations. Let's look at this. With respect to matters of form and procedure serve the convenience of the parties to litigation and often serve to simplify and expedite the proceeding. In some cases, they are uh, supported by the policy of favoring compromise in order to reduce the volume of litigation. All right, and this is, you know, and this is why, you you know, you'll say something like in court, you know, Yana, I really don't want to waste the judicial resources of the court, so there will be no need um, to, uh, to go to a trial on this. I'm not going to be um, challenging the facts. I stipulate to all the facts in this matter. Now, stipulating to the facts does not mean that you are uh, pleading guilty uh, to, to whatever it is that they want you to do. You're just saying, I don't want to argue with anything. Now, this puts them in a bind because if you're not arguing any facts, that means they can't take you to trial. And now they're in limbo. And the judge might start saying, so are you saying that, you know, you're pleading guilty to the charges? Now, you have to remember you're speaking to a, a, uh, uh, an administrator. And sometimes they don't know either. They don't know. All right. This is called a confession and avoidance. All right. Now, confession and avoidance is a common law term. But let's look at that term real quick and see what that is. It's called a confession and avoidance. Let's look at that. All right, so here it is, confession and avoidance. Confession and avoidance, a plea in which a defendant admits allegations. See right here, you can admit the allegations, but we have a conjunction. You know how when you be talking to somebody and you be trying to give them some information and they say, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but, but, Please additional facts. Okay, what are your additional facts? Where well, you're going to have your administrative process that's going to demonstrate that they've stipulated to some facts that you have. But it pleads additional facts that deprive the admitted facts of an adverse legal effect. So we're not talking about something that is pie in the sky. You can see that they have this. You can actually admit to some facts but avoid the adverse legal effect. Now, this was under the common law. In commercial law, we call it acceptance for value. I'm accepting what you're saying for value. So when I said, Yana, I'm the holder in due course. Here's the third party intervener. Make it a special appearance as an authorized representative for the defendant. I accept for value and return for value all the charge and instruments in this matter and make my exemption as principal available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts contained in the charging instrument. Please use my exemption for offset and adjustment of the public charges against the defendant and release the order of the court to me immediately. Now we begin to get an understanding of what you're saying. All right? We are avoiding going to trial because we have stipulated to the charges. Now, you should have already conducted an administrative process before when you're in court saying this. All right, you need something in hand as evidence that there has been a stipulation between you and your opposing party to the facts. There is an agreement already in place, Your Honor. Now, agreements can be implied or expressed. Let's explore that real quick. Let's look at, uh, you know, do, are there agreements? Let's look at agreements real quick, implied.
You know what? That ain't the word I'm looking for. I'm looking for at. All right, acquiescence. This is where I was trying to think of. My mind went blank. Acquiescence. All right, a person's tacit or passive acceptance implied consent to an act. All right, a person's tacit or passive acceptance, semicolon, explanation, implied consent to an act. Commercial acquiescence. Patents, an action or inaction by a patent's competitor that reflects the competitor's belief that the patent is valid. Okay, and it's here's second, international law, passivity and inaction on foreign claims that accord to customary international law usually call for protest to assert, preserve, or safeguard rights. All right, but right here, this is it, what we're looking at. A person's tacit or passive consent. You are consenting to something. You are consenting to something, all right? So if they remain silent on something, this is what ac acquiescence is a word you need to Write down, or tacit procreation is another word. Let me see if that's in this dictionary. You know, each, each one of these dictionaries have, let me see if I can find it in here, tacit procreation. I hope y'all are writing these words down. I hope y'all are writing these down. So right here, tacit, implied, but not actually expressed, implied by silence or silent acquiescence, a tacit understanding, a tacit admission, civil law arising by operation of law, all right, tacit acceptance, a tacit acceptance, an acceptance of an offer indicated by circumstances or operation of law rather than by expressed words, an acceptance of an inheritance, and okay, and this is, uh, this is sense too. Right here, you see you got a tacit, let me see if it's, uh, Tacit progression in here, but that, that's the word tacit. You see right there, it's, it's a, through your implied, if you're silent, silence is acquiescence is what I'm trying to say. Here in Georgia, we actually have, um, uh, we have, uh, what is that, that um, uh, acceptance, uh, what is that law here in Georgia we got? It's a business law, OCGA. All right, here in Georgia, you can find it in your code. Here it is. Acquiescence or silence is OCGA 24-336. Acquiescence or silence when the circumstances require an answer, a denial or other conduct may admit to an admission. Now, the reason that they're putting this in here is because these are principles of law. They just encodified it into a statute, okay, that if you silent on something, you admit to it. Equality under the law is mandatory. So what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So when you send these people your documents in the mail, okay, and that's why you send it certified mail with an affidavit of mailing from the notary, because you need two witnesses that not only did you send them something in the mail, but you need two witnesses that attest to the fact of what was actually in the correspondence that you sent to them. That requires them uh, to answer. And it says, uh, and I think we got another one here in Georgia. Where is it? 24... Let me see right here. Let me see if I can find it real quick for y'all. We got another one here in Georgia. It's under Title 24. What is it? Business letter, uh, duty. Let me see, I think it's like duty to respond to business letter. Yeah, that's it right there. Okay. So right here, 24 presumption. All right, so this is in Georgia also. I want to show you all this because they codify all this in the law. It says, 24 for presumption from failure to answer business letter. In the ordinary course of business, 
when good faith, all right, this is equity, good faith, that's an equitable principle, requires an answer, it is the duty. This is a word that we have to, you have to add to your vocabulary, the word duty. I want you to look this word up, okay? Stop thinking that you know the definition of words. It is the duty of the party receiving a letter from another to answer within a reasonable time. Otherwise, he is presumed to admit the propriety of the acts mentioned in the letter of his correspondent and adopt them. Meaning, if you don't answer to it, you admit to whatever I'm saying. Okay, that's what happens when you get a default judgment, you go into court. You don't show up for court, a default judgment silences acquiescence. You weren't there to speak, so everything they said, they're going to get. A default judgment is the worst thing that you can get. What the notary is doing is giving you a default judgment on the facts. The notary is not giving you a judgment on the law. The notary is giving you a default, so a certificate of non-response is a default judgment on the facts. Okay, now in equity... You know, you cannot, uh, you cannot come back later on and try to argue something when you had an opportunity to, uh, to discuss it through correspondence earlier on. This is why you're going to see it. This is another thing I want to put y'all up on game. You're going to find out these people don't like to put nothing in writing. They don't like to put, this is another way how they have hidden everything that they have done. They don't like to put anything in writing. They don't like to sign affidavits. They'll say something to you. This is a lie, this and that. He said, okay, I'll be more than happy to accept that if you'll sign an affidavit attesting that under penalty of perjury. All right? That's how you have to get it in law because in law, ain't no such thing as a lie in law. What it is is committing perjury. Okay, If they say something in law, it's just hearsay. If you can't substantiate it, it's not a lie. It's just hearsay. It doesn't become a lie perjurous until you get somebody to sign an affidavit. So they can say, they, it, that's why it's not unlawful to lie. They don't, that's why they'll lie to you. They don't have a problem lying to you. you. Are you crazy? They will lie to you all day because they they operating under the same rules like on the street. Like you mad at your boyfriend because he lied to you or your girlfriend because they lied to you. They ain't how it operates in law. It's either hearsay or somebody committed perjury. And if it's hearsay, it's true if you don't object to it. Sounds like bullying. You got to be one of those damn feminists and shit. Them damn feminists love that word bullying. You always see how these liberals and shit, they come out. You know, the liberals, let me tell y'all about y'all liberals and feminists. Y'all motherfuckers are like, you know, it's like, Y'all don't need to be running the world. Let me, let me tell you something. The world does not honor weak motherfuckers. Why don't you spend some time watching Animal Planet? You can't run the world. Y'all too weak. Y'all not strong enough. You talking about bullying and all of this shit right here. The, the universe favors the strong. The, only the strong survive. Everything weak dies at birth, gets ate up, Everything and, and everything in nature. If, if you watch the lions, the lions, if one of the cubs is weak, the mother will just leave that motherfucker to die. A bald eagle will throw its young out of the nest and they better fly. They're going to fly or die. You ought to go, you, if you really want an eye-opening experience, you need to just get and watch all the videos on a Komodo dragon. A Komodo dragon will let you know that dinosaurs existed. A Komodo dragon got to be the most ruthless mammal on but reptile. It's a reptile. It got to be. I know snakes are ruthless too, but it's just something about the way the Komodo dragon gets down. You know, it's just like, God dang. I mean, they, I mean, it's one. Watch the video of Komodo dragon eats a monkey live and just watch that animal swallow and it's going to eat a goat live and watch that and come to an understanding about nature okay because we're talking about nature we don't honor y'all be talking about bullying and all of this shit right here sky bullying all of that y'all sound soft as hell i you know, you know we need to do something about bullying you know it's just bully oh he's a sky bully no you just soft and weak That's what we need to tell these people. 
Only the strong survive. Can't let, I can't believe y'all let these feminists, you know, get, get, how y'all let these women? <laughs> You got y'all letting women dictating dictate to you what masculinity is. You know, y'all letting women y'all letting y'all letting women tell y'all y'all need to be more emotional. Cause you got some soft ass men out there. You let uh, right now our government is overrun with soft ass men. A whole bunch of soft ass men. Look at the, America right now is a laughing stock. We over here arguing about identifying as something and having arguments over what a man and a woman is. Over there in China, right now in China, you go on TikTok on China, they were TikTok in America, you got the women shaking their ass, doing stupid shit. TikTok in, uh, in China, they, uh, they put their children on there. They, they uh, academic achievements, sports achievements, athletic achievements, they uh, science, math, all of that, that's what they put in TikTok in China, but they give it to these fools over here in the United States, show them how uh, uh, the, the, the depravity that is going on in our country. Y'all scared to talk. What type of man is scared to tell a woman the truth? Because they got some other soft-ass men in government that'll sick the people with guns on you if you don't shut your fucking mouth. You need to get these now. You need to clear the fucking government out. Why are y'all letting all these people in government? Every fucking person in government needs to be fired. You need to clean that out. All of them, because they all sold out. Go listen to Cynthia McKinney. She's a woman, a black woman. She can't, she's the one on one of the whistleblowers that told you the truth. All of them out there then sold out. Why are you still letting these people in office? They sold out. They sold out to Israel. That's what she tell you. If you don't pledge to Israel, you're not getting any funding. And if you're in government right now, you're denying that you're a damn lie. I'm going to do a show on that. I'm going to do a show on that. I'm going to do a show on that. These niggas up in government, so they be passing laws, you know, these, these fan family law court. And I, what kind of man passes a law? What kind of man passes a law let a woman take his kids from him? What kind of man does that? He got to be gay. It's he, or some type of child pedophile or something like that. They got something hanging over him or something like that. You got to really start asking your que yourself the question, what kind of man passes some of these laws that get passed. They just blocked the law in California to allow, that would have sent pedophiles to, to like prison, I think like for life or something like that. They blocked it. Who blocked it? What kind of man, what kind of man, you, you know, man, let's speak, let's speak, man. If somebody raped your daughter, your 11 year old daughter, you're probably not waiting for the police. I know I'm not. I'm not waiting. I'm already accepted in my mind I'm going to prison. I've already accepted him. I said, you know what? I got to go to prison. I got, I got to go to prison because this nigga is going to die. This nigga done fuck with death. That's how you have to be. That's how you get rid of these people because let me tell you something. I remember one time I'm going to tell y'all a story. When I was 19 years old, I was like 18 years old. I was 18 years old, and I had moved out the house. I had had my own apartment, and, uh, and my mother and my sisters were still living at home. They were still at the house. It was all women just in the house. And my mother started dating this younger guy and moved him in the house with my two sisters and her. So one day, I get a phone call. I get a phone call and uh, it's my sister and she's like hysterical and she's saying, Joseph, this man over here, every time I go into the bathroom, he coming into the bathroom, uh, he, he coming into the bathroom and everything while I'm bathing and everything and, uh, you know, and he, she telling me all this and then he, she ended everything with, and he hit mama. I 
I was in my car. I was I was in my car going on 635 in Dallas. I don't know if anybody in Dallas, y'all know that 635 is going to Grand Prairie. And the, it's real wide highway, but you can just drive across. I didn't even take the exit. I drove, I turned off 635 and drove through the motherfucking grass onto the other side of the highway to head back to Oak Cliff. I go to Oak Cliff and I pull up in the uh, in the in the driveway. I got my 357 Magnum on me. And I snub nose. I walk into I walk into uh, into the house and he's sitting on the couch. And I walk in and I said, I said, you gotta go, bro. I said, you gotta go. He's sitting on the couch and he looked at me and he started laughing. So he stood up to confront me and I pulled my gun out and I put it on his forehead and I put it and set him right back down. I told him, I said, man, I'll blow your motherfucking head off, man. You don't put your damn uh, uh, motherfucking hands on my on my mother. This I was 18 years old when this happened. I was 18. But I'm saying this to say there needs to be men in the house that other men should be nervous about that if they touch your children, they're going to lose their fucking life, man. They're going to lose their life, man. That's what was in the Bible. In the Bible, in the Bible, you rape somebody, there was a death sentence. That's why in other countries, you don't have this going on. Because if you stole something, you lose a hand. You rape, I can't even imagine that. You know, you say somebody, you know, rape my daughter. I mean, it's like, okay, you, you like, it's like, I'm not really trying to talk to the police. I'm really not trying to talk. I mean, the only reason I talk to police because I can't find them. But if I can find them, I'm probably not trying to talk to the police. I'm trying not to talk to the police. This is what, this is what you have to have in, in society. So you got men out there. You got to start questioning these men that are in your government. What kind of men do you have in your government? Why aren't you questioning that? These are not men. These, these dudes are either sold out, they, uh, they got something hanging over their head, somebody got some pictures of them or something like that in an uncompromising situation. They not, you know, they gay or something like that. It's just something, it, these ain't real men. These ain't men in your government, man. These are not men. They trying to make some money or something like that. These are not people that are demonstrating that they are concerned about the welfare of their constituency. All right, they got some sort of private agenda that they got. I'm sorry to get sold off, but I see as soon as I see somebody talk about bullying and things like that, hell, I was bullied when I was young until I had to whoop the nigga ass eventually. I had to stand up and say, okay, I got to fight this motherfucker. I don't need no woman to come and say, you don't need to bully my son. No, I need to grab my son and take him up here. Okay, you fight this motherfucker. If you get your ass kicked, so be it. We'll come back tomorrow and do it again. And look at this motherfucker and talking about he's saying all this being, yeah, I support Andrew Tate. You niggas ain't seen nothing about Andrew Tate. You is soft as hell too. Ain't nothing but, it's a whole bunch of, oh, Andrew Tate, he's, uh, he's, a, he, 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 uh, he's the trafficking. You, you, you hear y'all what y'all saying about that? He ain't human trafficking nobody. They making up shit and y'all just hate the fact that this man is coming over there teaching young men to be men. Okay, because y'all got a gay fucking feminist agenda and you got something against masculinity and he's the flat, he's holding it for masculinity. That's what you don't like. It ain't have nothing to do with this made up bullshit about human trafficking. Y'all bitch ass niggas don't like it because he's talking about masculinity and you ain't no goddamn man. You one of them niggas that's, uh, that is, uh, that's weak, can't make no money, can't get no pussy, stand at home, motherfucking jacking your dick off. You the only, only, that's the only kind of man that wouldn't like somebody like that. Somebody's saying all that. Yes. Yeah, I support Andrew Tate. Because I'm a man. Why don't you? Oh, he's human trafficking women. 
every woman that they saying they didn't came and testify and say this man ain't did this. Are you following the news reports? Have you listened to what's going on? I do. I follow everything. But see, you ain't been in the criminal justice system. That's why I'm talking like this. You don't understand that they will make up charges on you if they got an agenda. You ain't talking about the fact that they offered them $1 billion to be quiet. Prior to them putting these charges on them, they offered them $1 billion. Why you ain't talking about that, bitch-ass nigga? These niggas is soft, man. I ain't lying, man. These niggas is soft. They like, yeah, how we get into this situation? I got me going. I, I I can't stand. I can't. I can't. I can't stand. I can't stand. I can't. I don't like this situation that we in right now, where men are trying to be women and women are trying to be men. I. It's a godless situation. You know. You just. It's just people have turned their back on God completely. You know, they they say, and, and it was so really interesting as all this was predicted in the Bible. You know, if you did, you were not a believer in the Bible. It's like, it's almost like, like damn, they, they said all this was going to happen. All this was going to happen. Anyway, let's get back on track. I just got set off. When I see that word bullying, you see, you got, you got these like, these like, these like phrases that you can tell somebody a feminist. Or you could tell something, you know, it's just they got these words they like to use. You know what I'm saying? It's, and then you see that word like mansplaining. What the fuck is mansplaining? Men run the fucking world. What are you talking about? We built this motherfucker. How we go? We supposed to explain shit because we built it. What are you talking about? What are you going to do if you don't know no man protects you? See, y'all feminists, y'all talking this shit. If there is a war and there are soldiers running through the street, I you going to be looking raping women because in war ain't no rules or anything like that. You're going to be looking for a man to protect you. You're going to be looking for a man to protect you. Talking about you don't need no man. You don't need a man because you're comfortable. Anytime. And one thing that I've learned in life, anytime that you comfortable, you in a compromising situation. First of all, you're not growing anymore. And secondly, you open to attack. Y'all too comfortable. The best way to play the game is not to play the game, but not playing the game is to, you know, right now they got the minds of the people. That is the, that is the answer. What uh, Jude uh, Paulman, uh, Paulman said, he said, the best way to play the game is not to play at all. Don't let the troll get you out of your frame. You're right, but sometimes I need to say some things, man. I need to make my position clear on the record what my position is. You know, you ain't going to shame y'all. Yeah, he support Andrew Tate. I'm like, yeah, I, hell yeah, I support Andrew Tate. You damn right I do. I look, I'm like, why you don't? If you a man, I'm kind of questioning why you don't. I've, I've been following everything since day one. I know how this goes, and I've dealt with the judicial system. They held the man six months, didn't have no evidence. They do that all the time. That wasn't no isolated circumstance. That's why the reason I'm doing what I'm doing right now, because they held me 31 months, didn't have no witnesses, didn't have nothing. See, if they, what they want you to do is plea out. But when you don't plea out and they don't have nothing, they can't do nothing but hold you and hope that you just give up. This is why in the Bible, let's look in the Bible real quick, what the Bible has to say about it. Right here, Revelations 2.10. What does it say? It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison 
that ye may be tried, and you shall have tribulations ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. You know how long they hold you in contempt? For ten days. What do you think that means right there? Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. It tell you that you're going to get tested. You're going to get cast into prison. We used to say this. You can't be a sovereign if you ain't ready, ready to sit in jail. Sometimes you're going to have to sit in jail, man. All the great leaders then went to jail and had to sit in jail for some amount of time. They will put false charges on you. Why would you believe everything the media is saying about Andrew Tate? That's what my, that's my question. Why are you believing what they say? I don't believe shit CNN say. I don't believe shit that MSNBC says. I don't believe shit that Time Magazine says. I don't believe shit. I don't believe shit. None. I don't believe shit from no fucking media outlet that's owned by the Zionist, the, by the Zionist elite. None. Did you see the, the uh, on Valuetainment, old dude who just came on, um, the pedophile guy? Let me just stop. That guy, he's a pedophile. That's a pedophile. Why ain't you talking about him? They caught him. He was damn and a damn uh, elected representative. Anyway, let me get back to the lesson at hand because y'all set me off with that right there. I set me off. Men nurtured through mentorship. It's in our DNA to share knowledge and explain things to children and women. It is the way we express love by abolishing ignorance. That has been demonized and labeled as mansplaining. That's exactly right. And it's these women, they get in program, they're getting programmed by the music. They're getting programmed by these other women that hate men or can't keep no man or anything like this. Marriages are falling apart. Families are being disintegrated. 80% of households are headed by women. Women are raising weak men. Anyway, it, uh, men, men are protectors and providers. Right? We're the ones that are responsible for our communities and responsible for our people. Back to the lesson. And, he, and thank you. Yakin the box. I don't know. Jock in the box. Yak in the box. <laughs> Yak in the box. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro, because that is so true. You know, they didn't coined all these phrases. Like, I, I had to take me a long, long turn, time to find out what a fucking incel is. You're like, what the hell is an incel? I forgot. I still forgot what it is. What is they? They got a new word. They call them incel, like an incel. I don't know what the hell an incel is. In they just make up shit. A member of an online community of young men who consider themselves unable to attract women sexually, typically associated with views that are hostile toward women and men who are sexually active. We call it a hater. You know, we just call it, it you know, you don't have to make up the word incel. We already had a word for that. It's called a fucking hater. <laughs> oh, well, you can't. That wouldn't sound like to me. A hater. <laughs> You got an incel, you know? I'm like, what the fuck is an incel? Y'all see women on, you see an incel? I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know? <laughs> it's an incel. <laughs> Involuntary celibate. You know, it's 51% of young men out there not having sex because 80% of the women are having sex with 20% of the men because the women want high value men, you know, men with cars and things like that. But that only makes up about 20% of the men. That's why those men have multiple women and that's what's going on. But they don't want to talk about that point right there. They calling these men in sales, but what you're doing on the, on the flip end, that's why you see people per, per, like what Nick Cannon got like 11 baby mamas and 
you know, Akon and all these different dudes and, you know, all these uh, celebrities got multiple maybe mamas, all right, because these women are sharing men on the, on the, on the, on the back end. They're sharing men. Any man when, when money knows that, you got money. Nine times out of ten, you have multiple women. So what is the word that y'all got for that? <laughs> I don't know. Let's get back. Let's get back. Let's get back to it. It's just funny. It's just funny to me. I listen to, to you know, this, 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 this sexual liberation when, uh, yeah, you women should be a virgin when they get married. They should be a virgin, but they not. What you, what you laughing at, Chucky Tronic? They should be a virgin when they get married. What are you talking about? They should. I think we should get back to that. But they not. You're not. There's there's what there's not. Do you know? Do you know of any virgins? <laughs> do you know of any? You know what I'm saying? You just tell me. He's sitting there laughing at this right here. You just you looking for something, Chucky? You know you always come on my channel, and I know that you are an in sale. You know you kind of some sort of in sale too in some kind of way because it amazes me how individuals who they be in the chat room and don't like what I talk about, but you on every live that I do, and it's just amazing. It's like how, why, you know, it's like with me, a real man, I don't go places on shit I don't like. It's like if there is a channel and dude is talking about something I don't like, I don't go over there on that channel and sit and be in the chat room talking. And I don't do that. I'm like, I don't, they talking about something I have no interest in or, or, or I don't jive with. I don't go. What kind of person goes on a channel of a person they don't like and stick around in the chat room talking and shit? I'm trying, what do you call that? Can we make up a word for that real quick? I know we got troll. We got a troll. We already got a word for it. It's called troll. But it has to be some other type of word to define it a little deeper than that. Because I really think they undercover fans, really. I think it's what it is. So we, we need something that basically kind of, you know, uh, you know, you know, inserts that, a word that kind of describes that, that thing where they really love the person, but they have to pretend like they really hate them, they admire them. It, and it's not really jealousy. You say you're rich with nothing else to do. He says if he's rich with nothing else to do. Okay, I mean, hey, I got money too. I got plenty to do. I'm sitting here doing this. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> if you're rich... Why don't you find a project? Go invite, go invest in some real estate. Uh, you know, do something like that. Why you, why you, you know, I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got a woman? Is your woman watching you do this? What does she say about this? <laughs> what does she say about you, Chucky? You know, you say, you're on that computer again. You know. <laughs> you know, money don't mean nothing if you can't get no women or nothing like that. And you're kind of like unattractive, you know, the money kind of like, it kind of loses some of its flavor, Chucky. <laughs> a woman's first boyfriend is her husband. No, it's not a woman's first boyfriend. It's a woman's first sexual encounter is her real husband. We'll talk about that another time, but like I did, that's true also. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. All right, let me get back. You got y'all took me all off case. What are we talking about? We're talking about liens, commercial liens. All right, let's get back. I done went all, all over the place. All right, so we were talking about agreements. All right, we're talking about agreements. All right, now with agreements agreements are very important okay that is what an administrative process is for an administrative process is to create an agreement of the parties and you have it in writing and it should be filed in court i'm gonna show you something real quick let me see if i got this on here i'm gonna show you something real quick what i'm talking about um this is a new this is a new laptop, so I don't know if I I just thought about that. Did I did I do I even have Word installed on this? I don't even know if I got Word. Oh, there it is right there. Let me see. Let me see if it's activated. You know, they be tripping and shit. It's unlicensed. You know, Microsoft wants you to pay for 
for Word. Now, I mean, Word was free. Now, they got you paying for it. All right, so let me see if I still can put this on here. So let me see. Let's see if I can put it on here still. Oops, right here. Let me see. Drop. So I'm going to show you a technique that I use for my paperwork. I'm going to show you something that I do on my paperwork, all right? And you can do the same thing. Yep, I got it right. Oh, shoot. Can I get it right here? Let's see. Man, what the hell? All right, I got it right here. Hold on, y'all. Okay. All right, I'm in. All right, so let me... Uh... Oh, my goodness gracious. What is all this right here? <laughs> boy, this... Uh, nine, seven, three. This is... Uh... You know, you got, I'm trying to sign in and something. They take you through like a million things just to sign in. Well, I guess, you know, I guess I should appreciate the security. Let me start crying. All right, so let's uh, look at, uh, let's say it's a certificate of, Let me see, yep, right here, here we go. All right, let me download this. I'm gonna put it in Word. Okay, this is a certificate of non-response. All right, you see this right here? Wait a minute, hold on, let me, uh, oh, it was a Word document, it's not a Word document. I need a Word document. What is a Word document? PDF, PDF. This is a doc right here. Doc, doc, PDF, PDF, PDF. Doc, doc, doc. There we go. Doc. All right. I got it. Got it right here. All right. Let's see. There we go. Damn, why is it black? All right. I'm going to show you all something real quick. All right, this is how you want to do your documents. Able editing. Let's see, I'm going to take this. All right, I'm going to give you an example of something. So, so you have a certificate of non response. So, I would do mine. Oh, shit, I can't even. Man, it's not letting me do nothing. I can't even copy it. I got a new computer, y'all. 
I'm gonna have to install Word on here. They want me to activate this, but I'm gonna show y'all how to, this is what you know, I'll explain it. Use a caption of the pleading on all your documents because when you do an administrative process, these are court documents. They are going to be introduced into court. And I can't believe this thing ain't editing. I should be able to open it with, let me see if I can open it with notepad. Hold on, let me see if I can open it with notepad. Nah, I can't do that either. Shit. But these are court documents. The caption, you got to know what a caption of the pleading is. And I wish I had put Word. I'm going to install. Next time we do a show, I'm going to have Word installed on here to show y'all because I, I forgot. Sometimes I want to show y'all how to put together documents on here. But how you do your documents, all of them are going to be put into court because that's going to be your agreement. When you're doing an administrative process, that is a stipulation between the parties. That stipulation is how you go to summary judgment. All right? You have to, when you're doing a confession and avoidance or an acceptance, you need to already have your administrative process in place. Now, to prevent these people, the UCC-1 is being introduced also. It serves as a notice to them that if you are attempting to put a claim against my state, I already have a priority perfected claim in place, and you're going to have to pay me that amount before you'll see a dime from my state. My claim is $100 million. So are you willing to pay me $100 million all right, before you put your claim against my estate? Because I already have a priority perfected interest. This is the reason why they don't like the secure party process. Because when you put a claim against your estate, you are preventing them from putting a lien against it. Thus, you're also preventing them from creating money. Because this is how the government makes money through municipal bonds and municipal funds based off of them giving people traffic tickets, criminal charges, things of that nature. They are funding government through the criminal justice system. Let me give you a uh, document that shows you the research behind this. Let me show you the research behind this. All right, y'all remember my boy Gene Keating? He got a thing called the Gene Keating Prison Treaties. Now, Gene Keating, he did more research into this than anybody. And right here, you can see right here, okay, it says... The courts are operating under statute law. A statute is defined in Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, revised as a kind of bond or obligation of record, being abbreviation for statute merchant or statute staple. All right, so this is what was really interesting, what I found out. Let's look at this word statute merchant. This word statute merchant is a very, very important word. This is what led me to researching the clerk's praxis because you got to understand these people just don't make up a system out of thin air. They've been developing the system that they are using for the last two, 3,000 years. Look at Matthew 5, 25, where Jesus is saying, you got to agree with your adversary before you go to court. He understood what was going on. So the statute merchant goes all the way back to 1100 with Edward I. So let's look at it real quick in Black's Law Dictionary and look at statute merchant to see if we have any foundation for establishing that they are involved in some sort of um, debtor's prison. Because that's what these really are, debtor's prison. Let's look at that real quick. Let me go back to the law dictionary. All right, so we on SBC University. When you come to SBC University, you're going to go to the dashboard. All right, then we're going to go to the dictionary. And let me just show y'all real quick. Y'all know at SBC University, like when you come in, this is your secure party videos. This is the first thing you want to do when you get you sign up. You want to go to the videos, 
and do these step-by-step -step training. These videos right here, I created, created 27 videos that talk about introduction, copyright clearance, cover letter, affidavit of termination of franchise, getting your 45 EI Incorp number, filling out IRS Form 8832, chargeback stamp, uh, overview, understanding the UCC3 forms, the UCC11 search, UCC1, W8, whole harmless agreements, 4-5 for the estate, cover letter for your virtual uh, vital statistics, endorsing the birth certificate, treasury packet cover, order for lawful money, uh, your commercial security agreement, registered mail forms, affidavit of tax exempt status, getting a 9-8 number. Uh, all these are separate videos that I put in place for you. All right? This is what you're paying for, first and foremost. You're paying over here to take these courses right here and learn how to do this step because it's called SBC University. So why are you joining SBC University and you ain't trying to become a secured party? That would be the first thing that you need to do is study those videos, all right? Then the next thing you need to do, you need to come in the archives and watch some of these old videos, which are a ton of those too. Got a ton of videos in here. So we got, and see all these videos, bonding criminal cases, all these videos that we have, credit, discharging debt, do not detain list. Yeah, everybody's talking about do not detain list. We did webinars on that back in the day. Uh, negotiable instruments, secure party web. I did a lot of secure party webinars. These are my old school secure party webinars right here. These are my old school. These, man, these, some of these webinars are like eight hours long. If you really want to see me at, at just when I was just really just getting down, y'all should watch these. You see I did this in 2013. This is probably my first one I did in 2013. I, I did uh, another one in 2013. I did one in 2014, 2016. I've been teaching this a long time, y'all. I've been teaching this a long time. All right, so let's go back to the dashboard real quick. All right, so we're going to go into the dictionary because we're going to look up this word statute merchant. You need to add this word to your vocabulary. Add this word to your vocabulary. This website running like, man, run, website running so smooth, man. I'm so damn happy. Y'all don't even know. I'm going to show it off. You know, I'm like, man, this website is running the way it's supposed to run. I'm going to have to speed it up. I'm going to have to probably pay a little bit more money to my hosting service and speed it up a little bit because there's so many people on it. So I'm going to have to upgrade my service. But, you know, other than that, that's it. Let's see. Um. Uh, what I'm looking at, statue, I'm looking at S's right here. Somebody said, I watched each of those videos 10 times. How were they? Uh, King, how were they? I see you said you watched them 10 times. That's when I was first, I first started out. All right, so right here, this right here is your statute merchant. This is a very important word for you to understand. It says one of two 13th century statutes establishing procedures to better secure and recover debts by, among other things, providing for a commercial bond. This is the word I want you to pay attention. If you got a federal case, you're going to see that they put a commercial bond in your case. They put a commercial bond in your case. Commercial bond that, if not timely paid, resulted in swift execution of the lands, goods, and body of the debtor. It is not a little remarkable that our common law knew no process whereby a man could pledge his body or liberty for payment of a debt. Under Edward I, the tide turned. In the interest of commerce, a new form of security, the so-called statute merchant, was invented, which gave the creditor power to demand the seizure and imprisonment of his debtor's body. Now, this is very important. When you see that uh, Gene Keating is talking about the statutes, what he's saying is that the statutes are bonds of record, meaning that these charges have amounts attached to them. This is why we ask them for the assessment for the charges. 
We said, Your Honor, I direct the prosecutor to provide the assessment for the charges, along with a certified audit trail of all transactions, including vouchers, as well as all disbursement documents and receipts. I'm asking you to provide me an assessment for the charges, because this is civil in nature. I know this is a debt collection, and I need to see it. Watch and see what happens. Yeah, I was ex I was real. Th I haven't I haven't I have not done a I'm going to do another seminar like I did in 2013. I just haven't done anything. I had the energy to do like all day seminars on, 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 you know, website seminars like all day on a Saturday and Sunday like I did back then. That's when I was fresh in the game. It was like, wow, you know, I, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to stay on a webinar like like, you know, 12 hours straight. <laughs> 12 hours straight webinars. All right. So, statute merchant. All right. So, we go back and we're going to look at the document, the prison treaties. If you have a loved one in prison, and I be getting, and I, and I get calls like that all the time. If you like, if you, and let me say this. Well, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to worry about that. I ain't worried about that. I ain't tripping. Let me see. I ain't going to talk about it. Ain't no big deal. Where is this thing at? So this prison treaties... I, what he's talking about, abbreviation for the statute merchant, I, this is what the prison system is operating off of, prison bonds. When you start studying, uh, you know, I went and pulled up um, the B424 perspective of Correction Corporations of America, and at the time, they were, the, they were a private trust. So I read their indenture agreement, and they have agreement with the government to keep all the beds 100% occupancy, as well as the fact that they get a per diem for every inmate, for every day an inmate stays in one of those beds. This is how these investors are making money off the prison system. And then inmates pay for all of this by producing labor. That's why in prison you have to have a job. If you don't have a job in prison, they'll put you in solitary confinement. You have to have a job. They're slave camps. That's all they are. If I stream it, yes, you can pay to attend it if I stream it. We're going to record it. I'm paying somebody to record it. You need to read this if you have somebody in prison. You need to read this, and you also need to read the Gene Keating transcript. I think this is it right here. Let's see if this is it. Let me tell you something. No, that's not it right there. Let's see if I can pull it up. Is it in here? You know, me and Gene Keating, we did a we did a seminar together. We did a seminar together. I mean, a a, a webinar together. I'm sorry, a webinar. We did a webinar together. There it is, right there. Gene Keating webinar. Uh, ain't a beautiful discharge debt. Where is that thing? Um, let's see if this is it. No, that's not it either. Let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Okay, there it is right there, Gene Keating transcript. This document right here, okay. This right here, I got this when I was locked up. This thing right here saved my life. I'm going to read the first page for you. And uh, this is how I was put on the right track on everything, reading this document. This document, I hold this document so close to my heart, and this is though I have always held Gene Keating in high esteem because when he, when this document right here, when it came into my possession, 
Um, it helped me so much in my research, and you're going to see why when I read this to you. And it says, I want to start, and this is a transcript of, I guess he was having a seminar or something like that, and somebody transcribed what he was actually saying. So it doesn't really read flu uh, really smooth because it's a transcript. But it goes on, it says, I want to start out by saying that to win in court, you have to know what goes on in court. What goes on in court uh, rooms goes back to Edward the First. It's called statute merchant. And what it is, is a bond of merchant or a bond of record. The statutes themselves are the bond, and what they do is duplicate the statutes that they charge you under with what they call a recognizance bond, and people sign the recognizance bond without reading what the bond says. I brought this to Joe's attention when he signed his bond, and what it says is that you agree to pay back the debt. When you go into court on a criminal charge, it's civil, not criminal. There is a book out called The Jurisdiction and Practice of the Law of Admiralty by John E. Hall. It's based on the clerk's praxis. The clerk's praxis was a clerk of the court of register of the court archers under the king's bench. The court of archers is a court of probate, and John E. Hall is the one that wrote this book. This book was never intended for public viewing. We are going to try to reprint this book so that everyone can have a copy of it to read. If you want to understand how Admiralty works, this is the book you need to read, and the reason being, read the case of Warren versus Clark. It talks about clerk's praxis in there, and they used it in the vice admiralty courts and the colonies during the American Revolution. This book caused the American Revolution. Now, I don't know about that, but what I will say is that I, when I read the clerk's praxis, I can understand why it wasn't written uh, meant for public viewing. You hear me talk about it all the time because it is the keys to opening your eyes and understanding everything when you go back. After you read the clerk's praxis, you can go back and read their statutes and see what's really going on. You need some sort of historical reference to understand modern day statutes. You just can't read modern day statutes and get an understanding. You've got to read the historical books and go back and look at it. All right. It goes on. It goes on. It says what they're doing is all about bonds. When you go into the courtroom after you're arrested, they use two different sets of bonds. What they do when you're arrested, they fill out a bid bond. The United States District Court uses 273, 274, and 275. Those are Miller Act bonds. They use that on the federal level. So SF means standard form. Standard form 273, standard form 274, and standard form 275. This is the United States District Court. There's another set of bonds, and they are all put out by the General Service Administration. I'm just talking off the top of my head because I have all this stuff memorized. GSA form S S4, uh, SF24 is the bid bond. Everyone should have a copy of the bid bond. The performance bond is SF25. The payment bond is SF25A and put out by the General Service Administration, which is abbreviated GSA. The GSA is under the comptroller of the currency, which is under the General Accounting Office, okay? You have two sets of bonds, SF24, SF25, SF25A. At the federal level, you have SF273, 274, and 275. Now, I'm going to pause real quick. Where do you get these bonds? All right, well, you go over to the General Service Administration. And when you go to the GSA website right here, you'll see it right here, but I want to show you all the bonds though. Let me just put in GSA form. So you go right here to forms, GSA, and here are all the forms right here. And you can go through them and you can search. And I'm looking for SF24. And you see it right here, bid bond. And you go SF25. You have to get these, you got to get these off of their website. You cannot. Here's the performance bond. You get it. You download it. And the reason why you have to get it off their website, because these bonds have expiration dates. You see how this one expires? 831-225. All right, so you just can't pull one out your ass off the internet from anywhere. You have to go to the GSA website to get these forms. All right, if you're going to use these, all right, you have to go to the General Service Administration. Okay, so just wanted to, you know, put that bug in your ear. All right, so he says, okay, what are they doing with these bonds? What's going on in the courtroom is that they are suing you for a debt collection. 
What it is, is it's an action of a some set. The word presume comes from the word a some set, which means I agree or I presume to do. An act of a some set, which means I agree to the collection of a debt. If you look at these bonds, every one of these bonds, the bid bond, performance bond, and payment bond, all have a penal sum attached to it. The reason for the penal sum is if you don't pay the debt, you go into default judgment. That is what is going on in the courtroom. This is why all these guys are sitting in prison wondering what is going on. If you go into there and argue jurisdiction, Jack Smith is exactly correct in what he is saying about honor and dishonor. If you go in and argue jurisdiction or refuse to answer questions that the judge of the court addresses to you, they will find you in contempt of court and they will put you in jail. And if you read clerk's praxis, that's all they talk about is contempt. Now, let me pause right here. He's absolutely correct. When you read clerk's praxis, but they don't use the word contempt, they use the word contumacy. Contumacy. Let's look up the word contumacy. All right, we're in class right now. People wanted to know why you come to SPC University. So right now, I'm in class right now. You in class. This is how I do it when I'm on SPC University. This is a class. All right, so we're going to look up the word contumacy. Let's look that word up. Or what they call contumacious conduct. Contumacious. This is when you re read clerk's praxis, they use different words. They don't use the word bond. All right. They use the word um, caution. Okay. So let's look at let's look at the word caution first. All right. So you have to understand how all these words are different from back then. But it, but when you understand what you're doing, you can bring it up to the modern day. So these were caution. What is a caution and what is contumacy? I'm going to stop at caution first. Caution. Right here. Security given to ensure performance of some obligation. All right, the person who gives security, a cautioner, or it says, see, bail. Okay? That's what they call a caution. Okay, so now we're going to look up the word contumacy or, or All right, so right here, here is it right here, contumacious conduct. Contumacious conduct, right here. A willful disobedience of the court. Contempt. Disorderly conduct, behavior that tends to disturb the public peace, offend public morals, or undermine public safety. A common law, there was no offense known as disorderly conduct, although the offense of breaching the peace made by many public, disper dis uh, made many public uh, disturbances criminal. In addition, this offense, this is what they do, uh, what old girl got caught up over there in Dubai. We used to have that in the United States. An old girl went over there to Dubai, making a, acting a damn fool, thinking that she can do that, uh, that black feminist stuff in, that she does in the United States over in Dubai, and they arrested her ass, and, and she might end up doing some prison time just for cussing out a man over in Dubai. <laughs> you don't do that. In, you can't do in other countries what you do in the United States of America. All right. In addition, this offense could be based on behavior that might cause another to respond in a violent manner, even though the party guilty of the breach of the peace acted quietly or secretly, as when a person challenges someone to a duel. Okay? And and you and you can see it right here. And, and then they got what is it, contumacy? Let me see. That's contumacious conduct, but let me go down here to contumacy. Okay, there it is. I'm looking for them. No. Let me see if I can just contum. Oh, there it is right here. Contumacy. Uh, there you go. Contumacy. All right. This is the word that they use in Admiralty. It says contempt of court, the refusal of a person to follow a court order or direction. It's like contumacious. You can see it right there. Contempt. All right. So when you read clerk's praxis, they're not going to be saying the word contempt. They're going to be using this word right here. I'm using, and the reason I pause to show you this is an example of how when you read something in history, you got to bring the words up to modern day. 
The word the, in ancient times they used the word contumacy. That's contempt today. They're gonna use the word contempt. So you're gonna be able to see, you know what? I see that they're doing the same thing. This is the same shit they're doing today. That's what's gonna trip you out. You're gonna be like, man, they just doing the exact same thing. They just modernized everything. They just modernized everything. So, so right here, what he was just talking about, arguing jurisdiction, he said all they talk about is contempt. When they used to, uh, what they used to do back in Edward I, if you owe a debt, they would send a sheriff out with a warrant to arrest you. This is all civil. This is not criminal. It's just a smoke screen to cover up what they are doing with mercantile civil law and what they used to do when they arrest people with a warrant and brought the person into court and made them sign a bond and released until the civil suit commenced. It actually says civil suit in clerk's practices. It, de it definitely does. It tells you that it's called a civil jurisdiction of the admiralty. There are some transcripts made of some of my thoughts, and I'm going to write it on the board so that everyone knows how to spell. This is how you spell clerk's practices, Latin for practice. If you look up praxis, it means practice. This is the only book I've ever seen, and I've seen about every Admiralty book in existence that's an actual praxis book, and it goes into everything that Jack teaches. It talks about letters of rogatory. It talks about the collection of the debt. What they do is arrest you, then they hold you. Basically, they hold you until the suit has been completed, and when they get default judgment on you because of your failure to pay the debt, they put you into prison. Anyone who has been in jail or prison that knows me knows that I'm not wrong. Attorneys are there to cover up the smoke screen. What attorneys do... What attorneys do... What attorneys do, because no one knows what is going on, they lead you into dishonor or default judgment, and then the court puts you into prison. Then they sell your default judgment. Who do they sell it to? Believe it or not, the U.S. District Court buys all of these state court judgments. We actually had a, uh, a um, we actually had a, um, when we were doing securitization audits, um, I, uh, it's a, um, oh, I forgot the name of it. It's a screen that lets you see what's going on on the investments on Wall Street. And they have a whole section on there. They, they got all the court cases on Wall Street. That's what the court case, the case number that you get is like a QCIP number. It's a security. It's a tracking number that they have. And I, I called up there and asked him, I said, why y'all tracking all these court cases? And the guy up there told me, he said, we just tracking them. He didn't give me no explanation. I'm telling y'all what, listen, I'm not claiming I know everything. Take what, I, what I'm telling you and go investigate it for yourself. There is even a document floating around on the internet showing out all the case. It's about um, juvenile court showing out all of these case numbers are actually QCIP numbers. They're securities tracking for each individual case. This is all civil. They're making money on every case. All right. Let me go down here. We're going to skip all this. Because he's talking about a lot of stuff about the DTC and QSIPs. He said, everyone should have, and he's talking about you should have all this stuff off the DTC. He's saying, you know, he's talking about QSIP numbers, SIN numbers. Um, major corporations are feeding off the prison system. How many of you have heard of RIDA, Real Estate Investment Trust? That was what corporate, uh, Correction Corporations of America was, but they converted it from a real estate investment trust as of late. Um, it goes on, it said, here what goes on, a contractor comes in or any corporation can come in, and what they do is tender a bid bond to the U.S. District Court, and they buy up these court judgments. And anytime you issue a bid bond, there has to be a reinsure. They even have a reinsurance treaty, international treaties. If you read the Constitution, treaties of the supreme law of the land, so they get a reinsurance company to come in and act as surety for the bid bond. Then they bring in a performance bond. All these bonds are bid, payment, and performance are surety bonds. And anytime you issue a bid bond, it has to have a surety. Where is the surety going? It is, what is the surety guaranteeing? That's what it should say. It's guaranteeing reinsuring the bid bond by issuing a performance bond. Uh, what, that's what these performance bonds are. Then they get an underwriter, and then they would be either an insurance broker or an investment banker. They come in and underwrite the performance bond, which is reinsuring the bid bond. Uh, what does the underwriter do with the payment bond? It's talking about underwriting right here. And it says right here, it says, um, you are funding the whole enchilada because you got into default judgment when you went into court. Before you can do anything, you have to know what is going on. He's talking about reading these codes. 
He said, right here is what I'm looking for. In order to win in court, you have to redeem the bond. I went in and asked them for the bond and everyone disappeared. Nobody showed up. That happened to me. If you go in and ask them for the bid bond, watch how they lock up. What, what are you talking about? You, you, there are things, you have to do it in a slick way. There are things you can do to convince yourself that all this stuff is real. You have to go in and test it for yourself. And you're going to see it. Same thing that happened to me. I was like, man, I cannot believe they doing this shit. And let me tell you something. There's something that they cannot lie. It, it's almost like um, they rather obfuscate than to answer your question. That's why they like try to uh, not, not, not answer your question, move on, over talk you, uh, do things. And that's how you have to, where you got to bring in the belligerent claimant. The belligerent claimant is belligerent claimant right here. Oh yeah, this right here. Yeah, right. This belligerent claimant. Oops. That's not it. It's on Scrib, though, but this is it right here. Download. Oh, my goodness gracious. This right here. Let me just read it for you. This is it right here. This is it right here. This is the case. This is actually a case. It says the privilege against self-incrimination is neither accorded to the passive resistant uh, nor to the person who is ignorant of his rights, nor to one who is indifferent there, too. It is a fighting clause. Its benefits can be retained only by sustained combat. It cannot be claimed by attorney or solicitor. It is valid only when insisted upon by a belligerent claimant in person. All right, McAllister versus Hinkle. And what I interpreted this when I was that you got to stand up for your rights. If you easily, if they can easily roll over you, that's what it talks about in the Bible. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. All right. When people get arrested, I, I just had a consultation today and dude was talking about his friend is in jail. And I think he's talking about getting him out of jail. I said, you're not getting him out of jail. He being tested right now. He's going through his test. He got to get himself out of jail. He's going through an ordeal right now. And he's got to be willing to go through it. He's been chosen. He's been selected for something. Because he was telling me how he's going up against the system. What he has to learn how to do is stop disrespecting judges. You got to remain in honor. You got to do all this as a gentleman. You got to kill these people with intelligence. You cannot t kill them with stupidity and ignorance. You cannot come into the courtroom acting ignorant. No, you can't. You got you. First of all, you, you can't access your bond. You got to ask for it. What are you talking about? Yeah, they can't outright lie about certain things. That's one. It's something about it. They, they, they don't lie. They try to figure out ways. Like when you watch a news report, when I was just watching a news report about the CPN, they didn't never say the CPN was illegal. They'll say things like, and people think that they can use a CPN and get a new credit file. Or they're led to believe they can get a CPN and get a new, but they never deny that you can't. That's how they kind of do their word things. That's the, that's the word play that they use. Sovereign citizens actually believe that these statutes are some kind of bond of record, but they won't ever uh, say, okay, well, if it's not, then sign this affidavit saying it's not. They won't do that. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do none of that. They're not signing an affidavit. You got the first, the next thing you got to learn is the game they playing. You know, watch that value tainment. I'm gonna tell you, if you want to see how they, they get down, I'm gonna show y'all something. Uh, value team had a, had a guest. All right. If you want to look at if you want to get to see the technique that they use, I want y'all to watch this video right here. Style 
this is this your, this your child pedophile. You know, you want to talk about Andrew Tate, but this dude right here, he get off. This was just amazing to me. This right here, let me tell you something. This was a serious ass show that uh, Valuetainment did, man. Let me tell you something, man. This this show right here, wow, man. I mean, this was a show. This right here, you he was talking about, this is Anthony Weiner, Slams, RFK. You need to, I don't know if, this, is this the original? I don't know if this is the actual. No, this is 20 minutes. This is just, this is a clip of the original podcast. You need to read. Very uh, uh, eloquent on the way you defended Hillary Clinton. Uh, that's a clip. But you need to watch the original, where is it, Anthony Weiner. You know, he was he got caught doing some type of, uh, he got caught in some type of sex scandal. This dude right here, Anthony Weiner. But the reason I'm bringing him up he got 1.1 million views. This is it right here. Well, now that's, that's just a clip right there. Got 1.1 million views. Where is the whole clip? But anyway, you know what I'm saying. The reason I'm telling you to watch this, this right here will show you the techniques that they use to obfuscate, to shame you, to make you say, oh, that sounds like a conspiracy theory. Uh, they use this, they've been using the same technique for hundreds of years. They've been using the same technique for hundreds of years. You got to be slow as fuck to keep falling for the okie doke. That's why they think the goyim is stupid. I can see why they, I can see it. I can see because the average person out there is just overly concerned with bullshit. They're concerned with having sex, getting money, and having fucking fun. Okay. That's just it. That's what the average person on the street, that's all that they are concerned with. So you, they can just, they just say things, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, that sounds like, a, oh, you know, you're talking, you're bringing up those people's family. Those are people, I mean, he did everything he could. You know, Patrick, I think, is a Muslim. And, you know, you had some Jewish guys on the panel, I think, white guys. You had a diversity of people on the panel. But you'll just see the techniques that are being used to when he start asking him a question about all these deaths, people coming up dead in the Clinton administration and how they just like, you know, like, you know, that sounds like a conspiracy theory. And like when the average person can see like, well, damn, you know, why is it that hell damn 50 people is around this person they end up dead, and, but it got to be a conspiracy theory. But they say, nah, that's just a coincidence. You know, things just happen. You know, they try to make you seem like you crazy. And you, you, you slow if you fall for it. That's why I have to do this. That's why the people that be in the, that be in, the uh, in the chat, when I do this right here and I talk and you see the trolls and things like that, that's what I'm battling against. Because they come in all that sovereign citizen stuff. You're talking about that sovereign citizen stuff. But I come on here and I have to show you these laws, history, books, definition of words. I go through all of that, but they still going to say, you surveil, I, that guy is just crazy. He's just crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. He didn't go to law school. Fuck the fact you put in 2,000, 10,000 hours, over 10,000 hours of study into this. That don't mean shit, nigga. You should have went to law school. That's the game. When it is the, do but then the next breath, they'll tell you ignorance of the law is no excuse and put your ass in jail. Watch that. I'm telling you, watch it. Study the technique. They use that same technique in the courts. They use that same technique in the media. They use it in everything. Identify the technique they use to obfuscate, to try to make you seem crazy. The, the key words they use like conspiracy theory. They made that word up. You have intuition. Trust your intuition.
Anyway, that's it for today. I got to get off now. I will be back on tomorrow at the same time. We're going to go through this again. We're going to continue. We're going to continue on and get into the bottom of all this. Tomorrow, we're going to go over some documents. I'm going to do some document preparation tomorrow on this administrative process. I'm going to show you some of the techniques that I use on my document preparation. And when you put documents in the court, and hopefully I can help some of you who always complain about, you know, I took this to the clerk and they didn't want to accept my paperwork. If the clerk didn't accept your paperwork, it wasn't nothing to do with the clerk. It was your ass. She is not reading that paperwork. You didn't made that shit. That shit was probably look like some bullshit. And she said, I ain't filing it. Anyway. I hope y'all got it. I want to appreciate, thank everybody for the donations. I want to make one last, uh, in, in the bottom of this video, we are having the conference in Dallas, Texas on the 5th and the 6th. You can register just by put, put, uh, clicking the link below this video. Okay, also, you can join, join my email list. You can go to the website, SBC University. Uh, email list is going to pop up. Join the email list because when I have these videos, I send out notification because YouTube won't send out a notification. I got over 50,000 followers and y'all can't even get 3,000 people. You know, it's like, well, why I got 50,000 followers? You ain't letting everybody know I'm putting up videos. So, then, you know, that's what they do because they're trying to restrict people from making too much money, you know, because 50,000 people watching your videos every day, you'd be probably making almost a million dollars off YouTube. So they're going to restrict it. So you're not getting a notification that the videos are playing. I send out email blasts. I've had my email list for years. I send out an email blast and I'll let you know when, every time I upload a video. And I also send you some important information also as well. Watch this Anthony Weiner interview. It is a class. It is a class. Look, listen to the techniques that they are using because they use it in everything. They use it in everything. You, if you're going to win in court or represent yourself in court or see the truth, you got to see how the lies are being utilized to keep you blinded and in, in, in the ignorance. With that, read Gene Keating transcript. If you have somebody in jail, the Gene Keating transcript, court survival guide, law redemption in court, creditors and their bonds. Give me my bonds is a, a cover letter for your GSA bonds. That is on SBC University in the template section. Um, what else? I think that's it for right now. You know, that's all I can tell you right now. Off to, just off the top of my head. But somebody asked, do you need a foreign address for an SS4 for an EIN? Okay, Terrence Turner, since you keep putting that shit in, how are they going to know what the, in the IRS in America going to know what your address you have overseas? They don't ask you no for no fucking address. Use your common sense, man. And I got a damn video on SBC University. They'll have no way of verifying an address in another country. Get you an address in a foreign country, like I did. I got an address in a foreign country because I have people in other countries. If you don't, if you feeling, if you feel some kind of way, let me tell you this: your SS4 is going to come in question if you do some sort of bullshit with your trust or you get in trouble, the first thing they do when they do an investigation on you is they're going to pull that SS4 form and see what you put on it. Now, take that information that I just gave you, sit down and think about how you want to proceed. All right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, peace to the gods. I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Be sure y'all hear about around, you know, I'm going to try to do it about two o'clock. I try to, I was trying to get it earlier, but I had people calling me like crazy. I got a customer service number. If you having problems lo logging in on the, on the contact page of SPC university, we do have a number you can call 
and you can talk to someone and they can assist you with your issue, okay? That's all you have to do. We will take care of everything for you. I'm getting it together over here, y'all. I got all type of people working for me. We're getting it together over here at SBC University. Peace to the gods. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all take it easy. All right, peace. I'm out.